France's La Grave Ski Resort caters to a very specific type of skier. Unlike most U.S. resorts, there's no avalanche control or snow maintenance here. Hit these slopes, you are truly on your own. This is essentially as wild and natural as you can get. So you can have things like an avalanche happen. This is extreme skiing. <laughs> March 23rd, 2015 seems typical enough for La Grave as five friends take a break from skiing and snowboarding to enjoy the scenery. The sun is up, you see the beautiful mountain range. No problems, no problems in the world. And then way up at the top, things begin to flow and you see the snow coming down. Look at this wall of snow. It's moving at a very rapid speed and this becomes serious. So the first thing I'm thinking is, why is this guy sitting on the ground as an avalanche is coming towards him? Much more calm than I'd be. This would be a real freak out moment. You have to be ready to move because avalanches can move at speeds of 60 to 80 miles an hour. Wow, they went from blue skies and sunshine to insanity. They're not getting into the type of snow that's going to bury them, but they are getting into this mass of wind and snow, so it's basically a, a blizzard. These skiers are experiencing what is known as a loose snow avalanche, which usually occurs in fairly dry conditions. The loose snow or slough avalanches are typically nowhere near as dangerous as the slab avalanches that can occur and that uh, oftentimes will cause many fatalities. As you can see, this is more like just a big snow shower that is moving across the area. I think these skiers are lucky that it wasn't worse, that this didn't go in a different direction. If they were right underneath that mountain, if they were right at the base of the mountain itself, I think this would be a very different situation. I don't think we'd ever have this video. A word of warning for anyone venturing into avalanche country. Don't go unless you're properly prepared. It's one thing to face winter's ferocity in the wilderness. It's yet another to deal with it in your own neighborhood. Just ask the Weather Channel's meteorologist. Back on Sunday, the wind from the southwest and west piled the water up here on this end of Lake Erie, sending waves crashing over this uh, wall here at Hoax Restaurant in Hamburg. One car was left behind. Oh, this is an amazing scene. This is kind of surreal here, but you know what? I know it very well. This is in my backyard. Wow, that's not one of those where an ice scraper is gonna do anything for you. <laughs> not a good time if that's your car. The mystery, of course, is how does a family car become an ice car? There were winds gusting over 60 miles an hour on the lakeshore for as much as a 24 hour period of time. This also was occurring when the temperatures were down into the teens. In addition, the car's owner left the vehicle parked next to the water after a night out with friends. Always better to park instead of drive home, but you might wanna to try to leave the car slightly further from the lake before the night of fun begins. Now all that's left is to free the car from its tomb of ice. First, apply 350 pounds of calcium flakes. And that calcium powder is just gonna eat through this ice with its heating power. You know, law of thermal dynamics here. What's good about the calcium, it's nowhere near as corrosive as typical rock salt. On contact with ice, calcium flakes form brine, which generates heat, which equals ice melting. Once the passenger side wheels are clear, the car is towed sideways across the parking lot so it can be loaded onto a flatbed truck. Well, they'd have to have a little alignment situation after this is all sorted out. And this is what's left. You can see the uh, wheel here, the mold here from the Mitsubishi rim. This is the ice on this side. Look at this, four to five inches of ice. And the lesson to be learned from all of this? Maybe don't park right next to Lake Erie. Maybe don't park right next to the ocean. Remember basic science. Water freezes when it's below 32 degrees. And if your car's below 32 degrees and water hits it, it's likely gonna freeze on contact. True or false, ocean water freezes at a different temperature than fresh water. 
salt water in the ocean freezes at 28.4 degrees Fahrenheit, 3.6 degrees lower than fresh water. In addition, the higher the salt content, the longer it takes to freeze. If you're someone who appreciates the ethereal nature of ice, there's probably nowhere in the world quite like Iceland. They call this place the land of fire and ice, both for its many active volcanoes and its magnificent glaciers. It's not all ice. I think everybody thinks the name of the country is Iceland. It's gotta be all frozen. The landscape of Iceland is just unbelievable. They've got volcanoes, hot springs, craters, glaciers, they have it all. This is a land of real, real extremes, and those extremes can result in these beautiful scenes of Mother Nature. It's no wonder then that a pair of adventurous young lovers might choose Iceland when they're looking to commemorate their engagement. So you're a jet-setting couple in love. You need a creative way to announce your engagement. You go to Iceland, of course. Clement Ng and Cece Wu arranged the trip through Life Studios in Vancouver, a boutique video and photographic studio that documents once-in-a-lifetime events for their clients. This photo shoot is not for the faint of heart. It's hard enough to get a good picture, let alone when you're dealing with the elements. I mean, you got the wind blowing, you're schlepping all the different outfits. They're obviously standing on glaciers and in snow, so it was cold. She's standing in a beautiful wedding dress that didn't have sleeves. It looks like they got out right to the very edges or even inside some of these glaciers. So certainly that had to involve some work in terms of getting there. In all, the couple spends three days filming in Iceland. I don't know who wouldn't be in awe of both Mother Nature and this couple's sense of adventure. I think Instagram and all that has made everybody be like, all right, I really gotta up my game in the engagement shoot. You know, outdo our friend like, oh, your engagement shoot was at the park. Mine was in Iceland. The world's fastest flowing glacier is in Greenland, Iceland's closest neighbor. At approximately 40 miles long and a mile thick, the glacier has reached speeds of 150 feet per day. Whether you live in Iceland or in Iowa, there's something about winter weather that can bring out the kid in all of us. Don't believe it? Then you haven't met this fellow from Montreal, Canada. Children, do not try this at home. Not How at much home. did it snow in Montreal yesterday? <laughs> Boof. It obviously snowed a lot. This is a ton of snow, and you can go diving off of playgrounds into snow. You know it's piled up. This is what you do, right, when you've been inside 11 months of the year, bracing yourself from the cold. How much did it snow? I'd be doing that, especially so blindly. Cannibal! Just think of falling into that. Oh, it's like into a bed of cotton balls, except this is really, really cold. <laughs> it's a very light, airy snow. You know, the crystals stack up real nice on top of each other, so you get these very high snowfall rates and these high, high piles of snow. The U.S. record for the amount of snow in one 24-hour period, 76 inches of snow in Silver Lake, Colorado. That's six feet of snow in one night. How much did it snow in Montreal last night? Coming up, a water spout stops the mail in its tracks. Oh no, all that mail. And a rare phenomenon comes with a built-in creep factor. What the hell's going on here? This is freaky as can be. When Weather Gone Viral continues. The unpredictable nature of weather can turn the most ordinary day completely upside down. October 12th, 2015. 
a water spout forms over the ocean, spinning and hurling debris onto the Sunshine Parkway near St. Petersburg, Florida. Water spouts are extremely common in Southern Florida and the Florida Keys. You have a lot of water, you have a lot of thunderstorms, and you don't necessarily need powerful supercells like you have out in the plains to create these kinds of spins, these water spouts. So they happen fairly often. But it's not every day. A water spout knocks over an 80,000 pound mail truck. Oh, just rips open that mail truck. Oh no, all that mail. That truck is already flipped over. The wind flips it back the other way as it rips open the trailer part of it. And you know, grandma might not get a birthday card now because of this water spout. Blame it on the different directions of swirling winds. The front side of the water spout can hit one way, the back side of the water spout can hit another. The smaller swirls around the larger parent swirl can move things in a variety of directions. Despite its natural beauty, the wind power of the water spout should never be underestimated. I think a lot of people look at water spouts as sort of this thing in the distance. It's soft and wispy and made of water, but it can absolutely produce very strong gusty winds. And if it moves ashore, you're now talking about a tornado and you could be looking at winds 70, 80, 90 miles per hour absolutely enough to tear up a mail truck. While this freak accident may have destroyed the mail truck, the delivery driver was miraculously unharmed. The warm waters surrounding Florida provide warmth and moisture for growing clouds that can spawn water spouts. An estimated 500 water spouts form off Florida every year. Even when we think we've seen it all, Mother Nature still has the capacity to astonish and bewilder us. Any idea what this is? I mean, you just see this and you think, what the hell's going on here? This is freaky as can be. And the wind is just blowing and blowing kind of in this eerie kind of gossamer wave on top of the leaves. And I've never seen anything like this before. Just looking at it, you wouldn't have any idea what you're looking at. But those are spider webs there on top of a soccer field. I see little specks that are on top of the webs and I'm, I'm thinking they might be the spiders, but I hope not. Oh, it gives you the creepy crawlies just watching this. It does make for a very beautiful, dramatic scene if you don't think about all the spiders. The spider waves measure almost 100 feet long. How they got here is just as amazing. A cyclone in New Zealand dumped a lot of rain there and flooded the soccer field and the spiders came up in the water and they spun their webs and then the water went down. Fairly brilliant of the spiders to escape the high water and the soggy ground and to create these webs that somehow keep them above all that. It's pretty genius. You see the fluid dynamics, which is cool because you can actually see the movement of the air currents, but then it's coupled with the creepiness of spiders. If you told me that this was possible, I would say no way. But look, we got the video right here. How much do you know about spider habitat? Antarctica is just about the only place you won't find spiders. Even in extremely hot and dry areas, spiders have evolved to survive without a direct water source. From the grassy fields of New Zealand to the frozen plains of Canada for a little weather-inspired art. This is really neat video. It looks like frost on a window that we sometimes are familiar with seeing. Look at how those crystals start forming right before our eyes. It's fascinating. This is a fun experiment that you can do yourself at home on a cold day. All you need is soapy water, a straw, and sub-zero temperatures. 
The bubble has moisture inside of it, and it is able to bring the cold air from the outside to its surface and allow the moisture inside the bubble to freeze and create crystals on the inside. It almost looks like a little snow globe, then all of the water will freeze, and eventually you have this solid, frozen bubble, which you can then break or leave and marvel at its awesomeness. The way that the bubble crusts up and forms all these little beautiful snowflakes on them, it's just absolutely beautiful. Hey, lots of fun you can have with ice crystals. You can learn a lot too, and it's pretty cool stuff. Coming up, a frozen lake plus too much free time equals a cold weather craze. And sub-zero temperatures inspire a Siberian symphony. This seriously is the coolest band ever. When Weather Gone Viral continues.